We've learned how to create objects in JavaScript by using the literal notation, that is the notation with the braces. So, but usually we are creating an object that has a, a predefined or a predetermined number of fields that we want to preset, right? Let's say you want to define a shape, an object for a shape that has an X and Y. Let's say it's a two-dimensional shape. Uh, actually, in this case, it's just saying the two-dimensional location, right? So let's say that's the object we want to define. What we can do is just create a function that creates such an object. We usually call these kinds of functions constructors because they allow us to construct uh, whatever value we're creating. In this case, it's, a, it's an object, right? So we write function and we give the name. We've seen in our last class that we can define a named function by using function. And then we give two parameters. What we do, we return an object using the literal notation. So the brackets, and it's just so far, it behaves exactly like a hash table. So we're returning it. And then if we want to create a shape, we can just call the constructor passing 10 and 2, and that will create a shape P or a point P that has P of X and P of I, right? Because we declare it this way. That's how we construct it. So it, it works as expected. Another way we can do is, let's say if we, another thing we can do is, let's say we want to extend a shape and now create a rectangle that extends, has the same fields X and Y, but now I also want to add a width and also a length. So one thing I can do is I can create a shape that already has X and Y, and I can initialize it passing X and Y, but now what I can do is, because objects are immutable, I can just add two new fields by with these two following instructions and i wrap it all in a constructor function so now when i create a rectangle internally i'm creating a shape and then i'm extending or updating the object returned by shape and adding two more fields and that's what i do here that's not what you usually do in a language like java right so we're going to see a bit more uh, in more detail how do you how do you get to a semantics that is closer to Java. But for now, we're going very simple, basic, in terms of making fields available and reusing some code. So the way we're reusing now is just by calling a function. Okay. So another thing we can do is we can use the, the, the keyword new, and we can also use a special variable called this. And this is where things start getting interesting in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, all, as I mentioned before, everything is an object, is a truly object-oriented um, programming language. This includes functions. So whenever you create a function, the function itself has is an object. So if it is an object, it also has a this, right? So what are you doing here? So what I'm doing when I have a shape when I'm, when I'm in this function, what I'm doing is I'm defining a function called shape and I'm passing X and Y, right? And now what I'm doing is I'm mutating this dot X and this dot Y. So the this here represents the shape function that you are defining. And this is kind of silly, right? If you think about it and if you were just using it, you would do something like this and then you would do, okay, so now I do I have a shape and I call 1, 10. It doesn't return anything, so that's kind of silly, but why, what can I do with it? Well, if I do shape.x, nothing happens. If I do shape.y, nothing happens. So you would think that the this would be available in shape, but actually it is not. So if I write shape.x, nothing happens. So it's not returning the mutation. So where is this field showing up? Where is this special variable appearing? Okay, so this special variable only appears in when you use the new keyword. So what you do is when you do new and you pass the function x, you, you, when you call a function with new, what you're doing is you're creating an, a new you, the way the easiest way to think of it is 
new shape is the same thing as calling shape, where this is initialized with, let's say, an empty, an empty, let's say I'm passing 10 and 20. Okay, and let's see if now it makes more sense. Sticking it a bit bigger. Okay, so we have this constructor here. Notice that there's this. So think of this as an implicit parameter. Whenever you do new, what you're doing is really creating an empty object and passing it for the implicit this, right? And then we call shape with a, a new object, right? Because we call it new shape. So you can think of it as just you, you would translate this expression as this expression so that you understand what's going on. So effectively what hap happens is whenever you define declare a function that access this, you can pass the this by using new. That makes more sense. So in this case, sorry for using this. Um, I, I would do new shape and now I passed an empty this and then I added two fields, field X and field Y. And then I return this, right? So then I get P1 is assigned to an object that has X to be zero and Y to be one. So, here is a more explicit version of the same functionality. What the new keyword is doing would be something very similar to writing this code, right? And the way I want, to under, want you to understand JavaScript is really by means of code, by means of looking at, thinking about it in terms of a compiler. Because what we've been doing so far is actually very interesting, is so far we've been learning about the semantics of a programming language by means of its execution power, right? We've been understanding Racket by implementing it, by implementing how we would execute Racket, you know, by running it in, in a evaluation function. Now what I want you to do in homework eight is to think about the meaning of a language by means of translation. And this is known in programming language theory as the difference between operational semantics, think interpreter, and denotational semantics, think compiler. So a compiler is also giving meaning to a language. It's saying, how do I, how do I reframe the source code, which is the meaning of a program, by giving it in terms of another programming language that I understand the meaning of, let's say assembly. And where I understand means the, the processor understands, right? So to put it in, in short or in simple terms, the difference between the first modules and this module is so far what we've been learning is how to understand the meaning of a programming language, right? In terms of operation, operational meaning. So how do you execute a program, a, lang uh, a, a programming language? Now what I want you to start thinking is how do I understand the semantics of a programming language by means of translating it into another language? Okay, so that, that's why now the examples are more compiler oriented. Again, we're doing now denotational semantics and before we were doing operational semantics. Okay, perfect. So now we've seen what is the, the new keyword doing? And we understand it by generating equivalent code without the new keyword. Okay, because everyone knows what is a function, has an understanding of what is a function calling. And we already learned what is um, updating fields in an object. So there's nothing new here that you could not have done before. So now we can start thinking about object methods, right? Usually when you use an object-oriented language, you have methods there. So how can we think of methods under this framework? So what could we do? Let's look at another example of shape where we now want to define a notion of translation. And note that there's a this again, becoming a bit more complicated, right? So we had a this, and we have two fields, 
right? And this is a constructor function, right? We're adding two fields, but now we're also adding another function. This function has access to this. Is this the context of the function that you're passing, or is it the context of shape? It's actually in the context of shape. So when we say this.x, it means the shape instance, not the methods instance, right? So effectively, let's look at this. Let's try to understand this intuitively. We are, create, we are defining a constructor that has two fields, x and y, and has a method translate that when given two parameters, x and y, increments x by x, parameter x, and the field y by the parameter y. That's what we're doing. That's how we write it in JavaScript. And this is how you call a method. You just say p1.translate. So this is probably not new if you've used Java, uh, Java or JavaScript, of course, or Python. So how do we understand it in terms of things that we've learned before? Okay, we've learned before how to create a lambda, right? We also learned that in JavaScript, a, lam a lambda can be written with the arrow syntax. So it, this is just a lambda that has a closure where it captured obj. obj is given as parameter. So now it's no longer mysterious. It's very concrete what's going on. In fact, you almost could write this in, in our language right in our uh, lambda d the problem is that we don't have a notion of you know we don't have a notion of an object we don't have a notion of this hash table right but that notion of a hash table is actually defined in the in the lambda js which is in your homework 8 okay so Basically, when you look at JavaScript, more modern JavaScript, you will see something like this. And this is very close to Java, right? You will see class, shape, and then you see constructor, and then you see a method here. That's how you define a method. Uh, and this is the constructor of a class. For instance, Python is underscore in it. Uh, and in Java is the n same name of, it would be shape. It would have the same name of the class. So if you were if you look at this code, it's probably not foreign to you. You would probably understand it. So just defines a class, creates a constructor that initializes x and y, and then we define a method that, that translates x and y. It does the same as what we saw before. But now we use this syntax, very nicer syntax, right? Way shorter, to the point. But the meaning is actually more complex, right? We have this abstraction that is known as a constructor. We have this abstraction known as a method. We use new to create a new object, a new instance of this, of a shape, right? We call a method. So how could we do this? What we're gonna see, sorry, in a, in a later video, is then how to translate this syntax as this code, because it's exactly the same code, right? And this is a way simpler form. So what you see in Lambda.js is actually a, a very simple language that doesn't know anything like this. It doesn't know what is a class or a construct or anything like that. But what we're going to learn in this module is really to deconstruct a programming language that might appear complex and make it break it down into very simple terms that are easy to implement.